LeBron James comes out last night. I think it was last night, yesterday sometime. And he says, we have enough to win. I want to state what I feel, and then I want to hear your thoughts. I believe, talent-wise, they do. Although I believe Derrick Rose would be a perfect addition to add to the squad because the Lakers are clearly not the same when LeBron goes off the floor. When he, they run their pick-and-roll offense when he's on the floor, and it looks fabulous. He gets off the floor. I don't think Rondo warrants the respect that a Derrick Rose has because he's not a scoring point guard, even though he's a great point guard. And as a result, that has to change things up for Coach Vogel, and I think they're compromised to some degree. But my biggest thing about the Lakers is the Clippers. I think the Lakers need a goon. I think they need a rough rod. I think they need a pest. Well, I don't give a damn if this is a Patrick Beverly or a bigger version of him or something. I think that when it comes down to the Lakers and the Clippers, I think it's about that heart. The Clippers tell me they got five dogs on their squad. They're wondering whether or not the Lakers have one. I want to know what your thoughts are when you look at those two L.A. teams, and specific, specifically to what LeBron James said about the Lakers having enough to win this year. Well, LeBron James has been to so many. It means you lose count of how many finals he's been to. Um, I think he's one of those Nine. very, very few players who elevates every the other four guys on his team like no other. Kind of like Magic Johnson. Like everybody's a threat on the floor. One thing I have seen in the Lakers, and I always give a shout out to my guys and former teammates, but um, they had a stretch when AD was out. He missed a bunch of games. They still won. Quinn Cook came in and did a, a, a hell of a job uh, coming in, putting in some points. He can score the ball. And, you know, so sometimes you have question marks and you have guys like Quinn Cook, uh, Alex Caruso. Um, I think Rondo's, Rondo's very underrated as well. Sometimes you look at his numbers and, and they might not tell the whole story, you know, the way he's orchestrating different things like that. Like that. And, and you don't see often too many teams that put two big men and rotate them the way they've done with Dwight Howard and the way they've done with JaVale McGee and how they've done. And then you look at the Clippers and – uh, a little different uh, because they have a lot of weapons, like you said. Um, Montrezl Harold's putting up, you know, he gets 30, you know, seems like every other week. And Lou Williams is able to get to the foul line like no other. And he's shown that he can do that in the playoffs as well. Last year's playoff performance, especially against us, was amazing. And coming back from 31 game and uh, taking the game from us in, in, in Golden State, uh, you know, they made us up our game a little bit. So, you know, they have a lot of weapons as well. Um, they've been really – solid in terms of where they're positioned right now, considering their injuries and considering that Kawhi Leonard and Paul George haven't been on the floor as much. So, you know, um, you want to see them play a little bit more these last, you know, 30, 40 games and seeing that they can build some chemistry going to the playoffs because they're going to be dangerous when, as well. When you say what you can still do, you said you mentioned, touched on some of the stuff that you can still do. When I look at the Lakers, I, there's a good reason people talk about Derrick Rose. They could use another ball handler. I disagree with you about Rondo at this point in his mm -hmm. career. I, I don't think it's a great fit with him out there a lot of the times. I think that's why they need another guy. But they need a two-way wing or a guy who can do things on both sides. Oh. Who, who's a dog on the Lakers? I agree with Stephen A. That sounds like Andre Iguodala to me. On the other hand, I look at the Clippers and I go, Patrick Beverly, Kawhi Leonard, Paul George. You, Montre you, I mean, everywhere you look, you got a dude who's like, who will play on both sides of the floor. And I think about Andre Iguodala on that team. Boy, that's a nightmare for other teams. Do you, would you rather go to a team that you feel like you fit in with that group better? Or would you rather go to a team where you look and they go, they could really use me, a guy like me on that team? Well, I mean, you, you're picking your poison, you know, in terms of, you know, you having the poison and, and you being able to shoot that in every way, whichever way you want against your opponent. Um, you know, I go back to that Rondo thing, you know, I think he does enhance their bench and making sure they get the most out of their bench. And I think that does give them a little bit more depth than the Clippers, but the Clippers have a little bit more firepower in terms of, you know, the guys you just named, uh, Paul George all the way down to Patrick Beverly, Lou Williams, Montrez Harrell. You know, they just got a lot of things going on right there. And, uh, you know, they got Magruder. They, got, they still got some other guys who are still coming to form. You put Iguodala in that starting five, and Lou Williams really is a six man. Ooh, right, ooh, but Max, ooh. Max and Stephen A. keep going under this, this assumption mm -hmm. that the Lakers need a dog, and, and then, then implying they don't have a dog on that team. You haven't been in the league and played against all these different players. You might know them more intimately, the mm -hmm. guys on that roster. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you feel that the Lakers have somebody with fire? Sometimes being a dog isn't necessarily commuted communicated vocally mm -hmm. or in that way. If there is someone, could you point them out? Well, I think they've uh, maximized their two bigs 
um, unlike any other team in the league. You know, with the way that they're rotating. Javale. Other than AD, you mean? You mean Dwight and and Dwight and J Dwight and yeah. Javale, mm -hmm. um, who were written off four or five years ago in the league, mm -hmm. yep. and the way they've been able to resurrect their career, I think that shows. You know, you got to give a lot of credit to LeBron, who's co-signed on it, obviously, mm -hmm. and said, "Bring these guys in. They're going to help us protect the paint. We're going to bring some strength around AD. You know, because the perception is AD is a little." Fragile in the paint with people trying to bump him and bruise him up oh, a little bit. He said he wanted some bodies down there to help and, him. And, right. I, and I think those two guys have been really good. It's the reason why the first in the West, second in the West. Management is, 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 is much as I have been profoundly against that over the years. Um, it's with the exception is LeBron James. If LeBron James for any reason said, you know what? I don't want to start playing until January. As a league, we should stand up and support him. Seriously. I mean, with the work that this man has put in, it doesn't bother me at all. And so I know he's not going to do that. That's why he showed up there last night. He's going to be ready for opening night, at least to some capacity. Uh, but I think that if the Lakers do start off, I'm not concerned at all because not only are they great, they're experienced. So when you look at LeBron James, I think that this is one of the rare breeds that has graduated to the point where he doesn't even need to be questioned about anything that's taking place in the regular season. Everything about him should be measured by postseason play. If this guy decides to step, take his foot off the gas, if he decides when to amp it up, whatever the case may be, you defer to his judgment. When you've been to 10 NBA Finals, when you've won four championships, and when we just finished experienced a global pandemic, uh, the likes of which we hadn't seen for a century, and somehow, some way, when we consider the collapse that we witnessed with the Los Angeles Clippers, because of them being devoid of leadership and what have you, although it was nice to see uh, Kawhi Leonard and Jimmy Kimmel last night, bottom line is, is that LeBron James and the Lakers didn't have that problem. And so I don't think there's anything to be worried about with the Lakers, a slow start or anything like that, because they have the greatness of Anthony Davis, who's one of the top three players in the world, and they have the best player in the world, who's the best leader in basketball, and that man is LeBron James. I don't think there's anything to be concerned about. I don't know what's happening today, but for the second straight segment, I, I don't know what's, I, maybe I have a fever or something. I don't know. I'm coming down with something. I agree with Stephen A. I agree, I, maybe for slightly <laughs> different reasons, but right on. I'm not, I'm not worried about the Lakers' slow start at all. Stephen A., let's be honest. The LeBron James teams of the past have often started slow, right? Miami had a slow start at one, one year. Cleveland had some slow starts. Because LeBron's figuring out, how do I get this group to the promised land? And in the meantime, he's 100 years old. He has more miles than anyone on his legs, and he has to pace himself. Now, last year, Anthony Davis came on first take and told us he challenged LeBron to set the tone on defense. And I think AD was probably right last year, like with a new group of guys and this superstar combination. It's important for your best player to set that tone. And for a lot of the season, LeBron did play better regular season defense than he had in years. But given his age and his mileage, it's, I think, not uh, responsible even to expect him to play defense, for example, all regular season. And sometimes the other guys on the team, even if AD's setting that example, slack off a little bit too when their leader doesn't do it, although Montrez Harrell plays some defense, some other guys will too. The point is, LeBron knows how to pace himself and knows his body. How do I get to be in the playoffs where, and when I need to put the pedal to the metal, I still got something in the tank? He's usually done that in the past. This past season, he basically kept the pedal to the metal all year. But I, I, I wouldn't even recommend that he does that again. He signed up for multiple years. He needs to pace himself so he's ready to go when they need him most. And if the Lakers get off to a slow start while LeBron's figuring it all out, no big deal, because when the lights are brightest, he'll show up. Well, I'm not worried about the Lakers at all. Matter of fact, the only thing I'm worried about is the Lakers coming out and dominating the league. Because when you look at this roster, in my opinion, this is the best roster on paper that LeBron James has had 
in the last four years. And no disrespect to last year's championship championship team, but when you look at the additions that Rob Palenka made, I'm looking at this, and, and LeBron can pace himself. He can take games off and do load management because they have weapons. They have guys that could come in and up and get the job done and, and, and deliver in, 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 in great fashion. And when I say that, I'm looking at a guy like Dennis Schroeder who's capable in the regular season especially for uh, that is capable of going for 30 plus a night. You got Montrez Harrell, another guy that's capable of giving you 20 a night if LeBron just decides not to play that night. And then you have Anthony Davis, along with Wes Matthews, along with Marcus Saul, along with Taylor Horton Tuck, Tuck, uh, Tucker, who keeps thriving. And even Kyle Kuzma, although Man, I disagree yeah. with his style of play at times, Although I disagree with Kyle Kuzma at times on how he plays the game of basketball, one thing about it, when he gets hot, he gets hot. So with the Lakers roster, job well done by Rob Palenka, I'm worried about them coming out and dominating too early. Oh, I'm sorry, Max, you did. All no, right. no, no, I was going to, I, I'm sorry, Max, I thought you was no, going to no, go. I mean, I, yeah, like, go. Listen, jump in, I'm not worried. I mean, I mean, I'm, I mean, not, worried, I'm not worried. But, but about Stephen A. Max, so Stephen A. Stephen A. and Max, that's how it be. Sometimes y'all get quiet when Big Perk come on here speaking the gospel. Y'all get caught up in my in what I be saying well, well, and loving how I'm delivering this good gospel. Well, and sometimes all, you just well, gotta fall back well, and well, listen. Well, yeah, that's well, what it is. First of all, you know better. First of all, you know better. Secondly, respect your <laughs> elders. Thirdly, and more importantly, that is factually incorrect, Kendrick Perkins. I mean, the fact of the matter is you do drop a lot of science, and I love you to death. But there are some things that you say sometimes I'll be wondering about you, bro. I'll be wondering about you sometimes. Yeah, not, well, most, I, not most, not most, yeah, not all, but, feel, but sometimes, I, yes. I feel sorry for your loss. I feel sorry for your loss because you're not being <laughs> open-minded. Yeah. When I tell you I certain just, things, I'm just trying to teach.